and welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of the UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley. And uh, yes, I realize we are still in March, uh, and with good reason. We have uh, re come to realize that we forgot to sell our sunflowers, which happen to have a high point in March here. In fact, they happen to be above the estimated max value at the moment. Uh, so we're going to get these things loaded up and onto the train to Minneapolis, get those sold today. And as long as we're going to be here in March uh, doing that, I figured we might as well uh, start selling off some of this equipment that we don't want to use. And I've already gone ahead and purchased uh, our new planting equipment. Uh, I was up to just a shy of $10 million as we got into March here. Uh, I can't recall if we actually managed to get into that by the end of the last episode. I seem to think we did. So uh, the money has dropped down here a bit because we picked up not one, but two planters. We're trying to uh, get everything uh, in place to really scale up our farming operation here. and. I thought about going up to a nice large DB120, but honestly getting around on the map with that seemed like it would be kind of a pain. And so we have gone ahead and picked up, this is the same planter that we demoed last year, uh, however we did return the lease on that, but I figured we've got the 8RX, we've got the tanks, we might as well use it. And then uh, by a popular uh, suggestion, we have picked up an 8R. We've got the uh, nice wheeled row crop version here. And so I've got the, uh, uh, I want to call it his and her uh, planters. We've got the tracked and wheeled uh, versions here. Now we'll be able to cover a lot more ground with this one with the uh, fertilizer tanks on the 8RX. Uh, I'm sure there's a mod of some kind where I could get an 8R with some tanks on it, uh, but we didn't have any, and I figured why not? We'll go ahead and jump into this because we are going to also be buying some land today. Uh, but before we get into all of that, I want to uh, uh, get our sunflowers going up to the station, and I want to get this equipment sold off, and in order to sell this off, I figured I'd bring it up here and we would uh, dump the seed out of it first. Now, I know you could probably get more money for driving this up to the dealership and selling it there, but I am way too lazy for that. So we're going to just uh, bring it all up here, and I am going to get rid of this drill because I figure if we're going to do any more... Uh, drilling we're going to get a, a newer a better one so this thing is going to uh go away we're gonna go ahead and just uh sell that and then we're going to sell this uh 9rt back as well because we have uh, gotten a good amount of use out of it but we've also had our fair share of problems so there's three hundred and seventy one thousand dollars back not quite enough to cover one of those planters. That's all right. Every a dollar counts. Uh, we don't have a specific money objective on this map other than to uh, see how much money we're making once we get all of our barns running. Uh, we're going to come in here and clean up all of this seed in just a little bit, though. I've got the feed all topped off here. We're waiting for some to be mixed, but I have the time slowed down because I don't want to miss out on those great sunflower prices. So without further ado, let me get the uh, semi filled up and headed up to town. And then once we've got that moving, we can uh, keep working on getting our planters all set up for spring here. And we'll take a look at uh, purchasing some new land. Looks like we got 3,500 bushels of sunflowers. I think we'll be able to get that three trips. Gosh, I don't even know. We've got less than a thousand bushels in the front hopper, so maybe we're going to need uh, four trips here to get it all. Seems like that's going to be the case. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to set this to farm bin site for our filling. We're going to set this to railroad silo dump for our dumping. And we're going to tell it to get all of our sunflowers. And away it goes. Hopefully this thing manages to pull this off and we don't have any issues with it getting stuck. We've got the shorter semi and the trailer here. I think it's going to work out. We'll find out for sure though. Our bale situation is not yet dire, but uh, we've got 30 on the trailer 
and only another uh, 51 in the storage here. So we've got enough bales, but only just. We don't have enough bales if we would like to uh, kind of keep going on things here. Uh, well, we have enough to get through, but my point being is that if I cut down the amount of grassland that we have, I think we would run out next year. So we can't uh, really afford to see any of our uh, grassland uh, go to waste. Well, we can't downsize it, I guess I should say. And uh, so if we look at the map here, you can see we've got these three small fields and then the bigger field that we're running uh, with our hay right now. I was thinking about turning this into corn, but that just doesn't seem like it's a great option for us given that we, uh, we have all of this silage that we need to get in uh, on top of needing the same amount of hay. So what I'm thinking about doing is we're gonna buy some more fields. Now, the one good thing about hay equipment is that it works better in wonky uh, sized fields. So I'm thinking about actually turning this into grass and I've clicked on this field. You can see we got 67 acres uh, across this area and uh, this field is 63 acres and this field is 27 acres so if i turned this field into grass instead because we had so many problems with this wonky irrigation ditch and the silage equipment maybe what we do is we turn both of these into grass and then i can uh, start doing corn up in field 19 nice and close to the farm for the silage trailers running back and forth uh, I could put cash crops, some smaller cash crops in these small fields, give us something to do where we'd harvest those ourselves maybe, uh, because getting the hay running in those is kind of a pain. And then what we would need is uh, some more fields to cover our corn, and we need a lot more corn than we have. So I'm looking at the map here, and any of these fields, this is an irrigation ditch, so not great for running the... Uh, course play and forge choppers and stuff around in it. Any of these fields with a lot of dips and stuff is going to be problematic. I like fields 33 and 35 here. That's 79 acres, 101. That'd be 180 acres, which doing some quick math, a little less than 100, 130. Man, that would not quite double the size of our farm. Uh, so let's see, we can afford this, right? 2.4 million. We're going to buy this one and we're going to buy that one. All right, so that's what, four and a half million dollars. Uh, let's just take a quick look at some of these other fields on the map. Maybe field 38 is pretty straightforward as well. We could do that. We'll get this field too. There we go. Another a million dollars uh, down the drain. All right, well, we're doing pretty good. We got three and a half million dollars still. Um, I feel like uh, I like this field, but there's no access to this little one in the back here. Um, we might have to go down there and take a look at some of these at some point, but this is going to bring me up to a good chunk of the map at this point. Maybe I'll go ahead and get 44 as well. That's another million dollars. We can afford it. I wonder how connected these two are. Let's uh, jump out of purchasing land and see if we can go down here and take a look at the boundary between 47 and 39. Taking a look at this, this field boundary here, this is actually not uh, bad. We could plow these two fields together here and then uh, have a nice big area. We got some decent grass boundaries uh, around this field too which would make our lives easier, hopefully, on uh, running some workers down here. Yeah, I think if I just connected these two, like right here, nothing too sharp, um, just to give us one larger field, this could be quite the interesting uh, corn silage area. Part of me is tempted to see if I could like get rid of that tree and do the same thing over here, but uh, some of these are starting to get a little bit uh, tight. I don't want to be dealing with too many uh, course play issues but yeah those two fields for sure so let's go ahead and do that we'll pick up field 37 and I have not even paid any attention to the ground quality that's a great field good field uh, 37s nah, a little below average but uh, these other two are both doing good we got some good land uh, across these fields 
uh, on par with the rest of our farm for sure. In fact, a little bit better land in uh, several cases. So this is going to do good for us. I like this purchase. What we need to do is get down here with a piece of tillage equipment then and get this all set up before we uh, get into setting up our planters. Well, I think uh, that given that we had a little bit of tillage to do, we might as well bust in the uh, ground with this new tractor, break it in a little bit and see how it performs. I don't think I've ever used this particular mod. Maybe I have, uh, but this is the Wield 8R 2020. I think this is the uh, custom modding's version. I don't know, I've got multiple uh, 8Rs in, in my uh, mods folder. I think I've got another one by uh, Sid Modding, so I apologize, I can't remember which one this is, but it looks nice. Let's uh, jump into the cab and uh, see how things uh, look and function here. Everything's uh, looking good. We're gonna spin through the yard here, try not to run into too many cows as we get back over here. Now, I have been storing my tillage equipment in the uh, shed here. I know, I know most farmers would just uh, leave this parked outside. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, room in our yard. Uh, the best place for us to store our equipment has been inside of this uh, shed here, so we're happy to do it. I keep saying shed. I mean, I guess it's a shed, but uh, I'm more think of this as a pole barn. There we go. We're all hooked up. Let's see if I can squeeze us out the door without running into the frame. Looking good. And, oh, that cow just got out of the way. That's what we're going to say, at least. Now, I need to get the planter over here and pick these uh, bags of seed up before our drivers come through. Would you look at that? Our sunflower uh, delivery was successful, and our semis all the way back up here in the yard. I'm excited. I was not expecting that to succeed for some reason, but there we are. He is back. Let's see if he can actually get into the silo dump system. Sometimes he gets hung up in there on the... Uh, concrete. Oh, he's got it this time. Well, awesome. I'm excited for that. Every once in a while, things work out here on Kiddick Farms. Uh, I'm taking this planter over here just to uh, see if we can get it filled up. Open up our hoppers here and uh, try and pick up the seed that's in the middle of the way because I just know it's going to be a mess as soon as I start moving the time forward. And I'm not getting a uh, trigger here to uh, refill these. Interestingly enough, I'll put them on the other side, see if it's a left versus right type thing. There it is. Um, it popped up, but it doesn't seem to actually be doing anything. There we go. Seed is filled from the back on this particular one. It's the fertilizer that I believe gets filled from the front. So I'm going to set these down right back here, and we should be able to finish uh, filling up the corn seed. All right, uh, I think I've got a couple more in the shed here, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I can't uh, pick them up because I'm standing in the trigger for the uh, door. I'm going to go ahead and put them right out there. I still got super speed on from... Uh, flying around the map. We got that turned off. Everything's getting a little bit easier to control here. And if we jump back in here, I should be able to top off, maybe not top off, but get the bulk of the seed uh, filled up. 79% is not too shabby. And I'm going to just uh, back him up here. I think he'll be out of the way if I can just get him uh, lined up more or less with the shed there like so. I think that's going to be a great place to leave him parked. And we'll take off with this 8R and head on down to our new fields. Now, the other thing we've got to worry about is uh, getting our road path set up to go down here. We don't want to have to drive everything manually down there every time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab onto this track here. And I'm going to try and continue this through. I'm going real slow because I want to fix uh, this little 
divot right here. I'm just going to bring that forward a bit so that uh, our road's nice and straight. Should be good. And then we're just going to keep uh, driving this all the way down to the end here. It's quite a ways to the other end of the map, which is the other main reason that I really want to get this uh, course set up right now and not have to continue dealing with this every time we need to come down here. So I'll just uh, keep driving here and we'll check in down by the field. Technically, there's no entrance to this field right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this path all the way over to the actual entrance to the field. Uh, just because there's quite the ditch there. And I am going to whoops, uh, try and come down uh, this dirt road like so. These dirt roads are really narrow. And so it's probably smarter to have set these up as a uh, two lane road the only reason i'm or a uh, single lane road where you can take a two-way path the only reason i'm trying to do this the way i am is that i would like to be able to come back down here with a semi in the future and have those going both ways so that when we are doing corn silage um, hopefully we can uh, have multiple trucks going back and forth at the same time now we're hitting lots of road signs, but I have to stay away from these power poles because I'm pretty sure there's collisions in the power poles. So we're gonna try this out. We're gonna see if we can manage to uh, make this work. My swing's a little wide here, but that's on purpose, we'll say. And I'm gonna stop recording and we're gonna make this, is this field 47? There we go. And now without further ado, I can, uh, take this guy out and across the field uh, what I want to do is uh, get rid of this auto drive nonsense is uh, start in the back side here and I want to line up with the way the field is going right now and carry that on into that uh, smaller longer field so I think if I can just get down here what would make the most sense is to square this field off um, so if I, for example, come right in here, I'm pretty sure this field is running at a perfect 90. Uh, so what I'm going to do is try and inch my way over here and then something like this looks pretty close. Um, I might want to come just a little bit more this way and then we'll curve back in and get my 90 degrees on the 8R and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on GPS and get my A point set and then I think that was a B point set all right so I have a 90 degree set now on the GPS I was hoping to do it in that little stretch there but for some reason my didn't see the B on my AB line pop up so we're going to try that again, and uh, hopefully this is going to work out. I've got my auto width set, not that we should need it. I'm going to pull right on into my track here, and I'm going to lower my plow down. I just want to see how close I'm getting to the edge of the grass there. Not quite close enough. So I'm going to push Alt-L, and then is it Alt-Page up is going to move me over here a little bit. I just want to get it lined up on the edge there and then I can turn on Y to allow create fields and we should start widening this out as we go. There we go. All right. So let's uh, take a look here. That looks pretty straight with the rest of the field. Now the question is, do I need a bit more of a curve into this field? Um, I don't know yet, so what I'm going to do, we're going to turn the oops guidance lines back off because they're a, a little bit obnoxious, and then I'm going to try and uh, just naturally bring this in a little bit here to make course play have an easier time with it. Something like this is a nice gradual curve. And that should work out pretty well for us, I think. So um, I'm going to go with that. we got a lot of grass down there. I could widen this field out some. 
I'm not going to though because I want to see how our equipment performs with a little bit of grace uh, before you run into all those trees and such and uh, we can always come back and clean this up make it a little bit wider in the future uh, and the other thing I'm loving here is that uh, this is the perfect width for us now I'm a handful of gears too high up on the gear bracket so let's drop this thing down 14 seems like a good gear for this work and we're just gonna try and keep ourselves right in the middle of this grass stretch all the way down and get this taken care of now my mini map should update eventually uh, with the field being combined down there I don't know how long that takes but you can already see that first part that we did uh, has updated and I suspect that the rest of this will update eventually I don't know how that works exactly we just got to get to the end of the line here oh there it is it's already starting to update I love it uh, I'm gonna take this down pretty close to the end of the line and then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn the GPS lines back on and I'm gonna try and find the edge of the field here and get these two to line up nice and square uh, so that there's a no funny business when we come back in here with the uh, GPS so that should be close enough to get started and then let me just uh, we're gonna back up here a bit and then we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna spin around here and we're gonna take it from this side over there I think just to uh, change it up a bit looking good let's all page down all the way actually I think it's gonna be quicker to go from the other side so if I just zip this up here now what I'm seeing is I think these two fields aren't quite the same um, I'm gonna bring this up here but I think this is gonna be making the other field wider the whole way down if I'm not mistaken we're gonna we're gonna get squared up here and see what happens start uh, plowing this yeah we're gonna have to make this other field just a smidge wider the whole way down to make these even which I'm actually okay with uh, we might have to figure out how to paint over those bushes though uh, we'll deal with that later. They're not going to hurt anything. I don't want to mess up my uh, current GPS run. So I'm going to just uh, take this all the way down the edge of this field. Get the extra row or so out of this. And we'll call it a day. And here we are up in the corner. Now the trick here as always. I'm going to turn GPS off. We're going to see if we can get ourselves a nice gradual curve into what's already here that's looking pretty good i'm gonna lift this up we're gonna turn off create fields get ourselves all folded up yeah i like that that's not too steep should work out good for us so with that out of the way that's uh really all we needed to do to get these two fields combined what we have to do next is uh bring our auto drive course back up to the farm so I'm gonna have to uh, figure out the best way to accomplish that. We're probably gonna drag this forward and uh, do one of these where we get a two-way course going on this first little bit. And then off we go, recording a normal course from this point on. Should be able to just uh, get right out here on the road. We are taking out signs. Uh, because if I don't, then our semis will be too close to each other. I'd never be able to run two big pieces of equipment like this down the road, but I want to at least be able to have semis getting past each other uh, without uh, lots of headaches. So we're going to just ignore the fact that every sign on the road is uh, getting knocked down since we're doing this with the worst possible equipment today. And I'm just going to zip all the way back up to the farmyard now. All right, I am back up here in the uh, general vicinity of the farm. I'm trying to think about the best place to go ahead and uh, put the uh, chisel plow here. I think I'm going to have the easiest time getting through this double wide gate down here. Maybe not. We'll find out. I always uh, 
turn too shallow coming into it, but it looks like I've nailed it this time. Look at that. And what are we going to do? Am I going to pull through or try and back in? Um, let's go ahead and pull through, which I think means uh, I do like when I exit out this side. It's a little bit easier to get out with the equipment. So I'm going to come around this side of the uh, farmyard and pull straight through this big barn. See if we can manage to do this without going down the hill. Not too bad, not too bad at all. This 8R's got a decent enough uh, turn radius here. I'm going to go ahead and bring my camera in for... Oh, we just nudged the door with the tires there. That's all right. And uh, it's got a decent enough turn radius, so we've not had too many problems navigating around. Um, that one was clearly my fault, not the tractor's fault. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to back this all the way up here, if I can manage it. I'm in a little bit too low of a gear. We need to go just a smidge faster here. And I'm going to back this all the way up to the... Uh, back wall here I think if I can get it close enough without running any of the shovels into the wall there we go oh we just gave it the slightest love tap I guess in real life that probably would have uh, done some significant damage but uh, I didn't need to shut this thing off though so I'm gonna fire this back up I want to bring this out and get this hooked back up to the planter where done with the tillage as far as I know. I think we did all of that in the fall. So let's get this over here and uh, we're going to need to get both of our planters filled up uh, here getting ready for the spring season, which means we probably need to send the seed tender down to grab some seed. I'm not sure how much uh, seed we're going to need here. I guess I can look at the planter that's already got some in it and get a feel for how much these things hold. So I'll get this uh, backed up here. Something like that ought to work out great. And we're just going to leave it here for now. I am going to need some liquid fertilizer as well. I don't think we've got any of that left over. We'll have to look in the side of that other shed here in a moment. Uh, but I got about 103, 104 bushels and I'm at 80%. So that means I could hold, what, another 20 bushels? Uh, so I'm going to need 140 bushels of seed. Uh, so we're going to come over here and we're going to get the seed tender sent down to town. I'm just looking, nope, that's herbicide. I don't think we've got any liquid fertilizer left. Uh, we've got the, the big trailer over there that we're going to send up to town and, and get some at the bulk fill point, I think. Uh, but since I know we're going to need some seed, we're going to get this thing all fired up here and send it down to bulk fill dry, I believe is also a seed refill point, not just for the lime. Uh, that's what we're going to hope at least. And uh, there you go. We'll find out when he gets down there. And so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and steal this pickup here quickly and we're gonna go hook that other trailer up and we're gonna see uh, if I can find a bulk fill point for the liquid fertilizer or if I I think I've just been buying pallets to be honest I really can't remember I know realistically you just buy a uh, pallet of uh, product and then mix it with your own water most of the time so that's what we're trying to simulate with uh, how we're doing this. So let me back on in here, get this hooked up. Yeah, it's empty. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. We're going to go ahead and purchase a, a bit of fertilizer here. I went ahead and bought four pallets worth. I'm not sure how many of this thing can hold. So we're about to find out. I'm hoping this thing will load from both sides here for me. I think these pallets were 500 gallons a piece. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. For some reason, my brain told me that this thing held four. I'm glad I recalled correctly. There we go. All topped off. Now let's see if we can uh, figure out how to get this thing to unload into a planter. If I remember right, we got to come in here and start the pump. 
and I have it set to unloading side right. And then let's hop in here and see if I can use this to refill. I'm gonna pull forward and then back up again. I don't remember how this works out if uh, the fill points for this thing are on the back as well, or if there's like a side fill somewhere. I'm going to uh, just back this thing up close-ish to the uh, spray trailer. And if I don't get anything, what I'll do is I'll move the spray trailer behind us. Um, you know what, before we do that, let me, uh, let me back up a little bit farther. Something tells me it was near the front at some point. Alright, I didn't get any kind of a fill trigger there as far as I could tell. I'm gonna do it on the other side, and then I'm gonna try and uh, move the trailer into a position where I can back it straight up. This is the problem with uh, it being 20, 30 episodes in between uh, what we're doing is I don't remember how some of this equipment works. Looks like my other truck got down to the seed fill point as well. That's great. I'm gonna try and maneuver this thing in such a way. Because I know the seed refill point was right back here. Uh, the pump is going unloading side right. Maybe I need to change that. I can never remember if this is the one where I have to be in the, the uh, trailer and able to unload or if I have to get back up into the planter to do it. We've accidentally dumped our uh, containers out on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, reload them into the planter directly. That seems to be working too. So I'm obviously missing something with this trailer again. Uh, I hate when I do that. I Every time I use it, I feel like I forget how it works. I'm gonna have to look that up because I'm gonna be hauling some fertilizer out to the fields here and I'd prefer to do it with that trailer if at all possible. And uh, would you look at that? We've already uh, filled up the planter so quickly. Uh, let me get this thing out of the way. There's not a lot of places for me to go with it right now. So over here into the uh, semi-parking lot. We want to keep those sunflowers moving. And as long as that's going, what we'll do is I'm going to take this uh, tractor here and we'll go grab ourselves some fertilizer as well. Might as well get this all set up for our spring planting season. And then we'll head down to town and uh, figure out what we're buying for seed. Now, this guy has the front tanks that we can fill, and I think they hold a bit more. So let's go ahead and start that off. We're going to start filling here from the front. Should work out for us. That holds quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to back up. I think I need to get a little bit closer to these ones on my left. They don't seem to be filling. There we go. Pull on up alongside here. And perfect. Well, if nothing else, this has cleaned up the mess of having uh, fertilizer containers uh, on the ground for us. I was worried we were going to have uh, leftovers, but not so much. We're going to be well and set here, filling up the uh, front tanks on this thing at least. Perfect. And I suppose we could always buy one more and see if we can get this thing completely full. I don't want to fill the back ones up until the front ones are full, so we're going to try and tackle that here. There we go. Front tanks are full. Let's uh, switch the back tank now. Oops. And uh, maybe they uh, filled together. That's interesting. I kind of thought they were a separate uh, entity, but it looks like filling the front tanks has filled the back tanks as well. Because I don't have, like, an empty bar or any empty percentage. I actually like that. That's really cool. All right. Well, in that case, I've got uh, our planner all set up here. This one's actually almost ready to go uh, between the corn and the liquid fertilizer. So I'm going to bring him right back over here. 
and we'll leave him parked right there. My feed wagons are still not running at the moment. And I'm going to take this and we are going to uh, we're going to put it back into that liquid fertilizer tank here uh, because I am going to try and continue to play around with this off camera. Maybe I'll go back and watch a previous episode where I've used it and we're just going to figure out how to uh, how to get this thing working again because it is going to be necessary, I feel like, in this particular uh, series. Oh, and it's a good thing I came over here. It looks like our semi has managed to get himself hung up on this uh, concrete barrier. Happens from time to time. And that's going to be the last of our sunflowers, I think. Let's see here. A thousand... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're all out of uh, sunflowers now. Perfect. Well, well, that means we need to go ahead and uh, send this guy on his way, even though he's half empty. And we're going to jump on down here to our bulk dry point. I'm going to get this all uncovered. And hopefully we can grab ourselves some seed. And if I remember right, we, had, we were looking for 120 bushel whoops, to finish filling things up. So I'm going to go ahead and get one hopper full here and see what that equates to. All right, that's 200. So that's going to get us through uh, refilling. And uh, if I get another 200, that should be enough. I don't think we need a ton of seed. We'll find out. I can always come back up here. I'm not afraid to drive around a little bit after we do a refill. But uh, what I don't want to do is... Uh, completely fill this guy up with uh, stuff that we're not going to use. So that's 400. Now, the question that comes to mind and why I don't want to fill him up is the whole pH thing. Do I need to spread lime on our new fields? Oh, our new fields are not uh, part of our precision farming map. So I'm going to go ahead and Get those all purchased for ridiculous sums of money. That's okay. We've got the money to burn. And as you can see, our pH levels are pretty decent up here. And not abysmal, but definitely not great down here. So we could probably get some uh, uh, lime spreading going on down here if we wanted. That could help out quite a bit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fill the rest of this thing up with uh, lime, I guess. And that will uh, tell us at least how much we're going to be able to do. Uh, I figure we won't get through all of those fields with uh, what we can bring back with us, but we might be able to knock one of them out. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think we're going to try and get lime on all of them uh, this season. I think the plan is going to be to spread what we can. Uh, and we'll cover the rest of it in the coming fall season. I want to just uh, get into spring. I want to get things uh, planting, and I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, uh, doing some of these kind of tasks. Uh, we've got enough uh, maintenance-type tasks to do that we can kind of spread them out. We won't have to spread lime on our other fields uh, this year because we've finished... Uh, spreading a last fall on most of ours so i think if i can just uh make a dent and get them on a rotation where i spread lime on uh, fields every couple of years and then i'm only doing half of them each year it'll be a lot less daunting because uh spreading lime is one of those tasks that it just takes some management because you're always uh refilling the lime spreader even the giant spreader that we've got gets to be a bit much but we're all set we've got our lime we've got our seeds and we're gonna be uh, looking at good for spring here now uh, in fact I might even be able to get some lime spreading while we're planting uh, next season too I'll have to look and see what tractor I would put on that uh, we're gonna send this guy back up to the farmyard though and I'm wondering if we should spread any manure on some of these fields i'm just taking a look at them uh let's take a look at the nitrogen levels oh it's abysmal uh we should probably go down there and try to hit at least one of these fields 
uh, 48 maybe we would have some for. Uh, we've been selling off our digestate though because I wasn't planning on using any more of it until fall. So I need to come in here and change our digestate to storing. And that way we can uh, start trucking some of that down to the field as needed. And I suppose I'm going to go ahead and we'll send this guy down there. Now, I don't have a point to all of those fields down there, but I do have one for field 47. So we'll send the spreader down to field 47 uh, and we'll start pumping as much uh, digestate into the ground as we think we can get away with. Uh, obviously, I could always hit these fields up with just the liquid nitrogen while we're planting, but the whole point of having this set up is to be able to, uh, well, find a use for all of this cow slurry, but also to cut down on our costs. And so we are, uh, we're, we're strapped for money, folks, you know, with the two million sitting in the bank doing nothing. Uh, so we gotta make every uh, little bit count. We might need to pick up another manure spreader with all of this land as well. So that's, uh, that's something I'm gonna take a think on between now and next episode and see if that's something we need to do. Now it looks like this semi is all unloaded here. We've got all of our grain at the railway station. I'm gonna hop across the bridge here. We just missed it. Hey, it's DJ and Clutch. Good to see you guys. Uh, we're going to hop back across the way here, and I'm going to get the train coming. Uh, if I remember right, the train rental shack is right over here. So we're going to do this. I've rented the train, and we should be good to go as soon as that thing shows up and there it is it's actually coming down the way as we speak so that it shouldn't be a long wait for the train i'm just hoping i can uh hop in it and do what i need to do before it gets too far it's always comes to a stop right here that's nice i think i have to wait until it stops to get in i do all right here we go get this green car open I don't think we're going to need more than one. We don't have that many uh, sunflowers to sell off. Oh, oh, we were going too fast. I don't know if I'm going to stop in time. Perfect. And let me find them somewhere in here. Oh, there they were. 3,514 bushels. Well, this thing doesn't hold as much as I thought it did. We're already half full. Yeah, we're going to need two cars. What do you know? Well... We've got the space. All right, we're all uh, loaded up. Let's get this thing down to the uh, exit of the map and see how much money we're going to make from our sunflowers. We're officially into the fifth year on this map as well. I didn't realize so much time has flown by. We've uh, completed four full years on UMRV now already. And uh, this year we should be able to complete the last of my uh, personal set goals and objectives for the map, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, so it should be fun to uh, really scale things up here and uh, kind of see how that goes. And there we go. We're going to sell all of our stuff to Minneapolis. 218,000 for the harvest and another 13 grand for our environmental score reward from Precision Farming. I like it. We're doing good, making the dough. I mean, that's almost a day's worth of uh, milk income from a single one of our uh, barns, but you know, it's, it's good money. It was totally worth all the time and effort. All right, we've got them all set up now. We've got our semis back up in the yard. Oh, we're causing all kinds of grief. My goodness, folks, this is, uh, this is why you can't trust the workers to do anything around here oh my goodness all right knock it off knock it off we're gonna just uh put him in the middle of the yard here so he's quote unquote out of the way like so and we should be able to stop this other guy before he causes too much more grief oh uh, good grief oh, all right there we go all ready to uh do something again in the fall. We'll definitely be using that semi though at some point here, I'm sure. 
to uh, do something else. And uh, yeah, we've got to figure out what crops we're planting. I know uh, some people have suggested that we can also silage the uh, hay, do some haylage. Uh, we may check into that. I, I did some in the past. We might uh, double down on that. I do like baling uh, our hay because it's uh, easier to work with than uh, always dealing with all the uh, uh, forage uh, choppers and the semis to unload all that. I've had uh, mixed results with that in the past. However, our production chain building here does support making haylage. It brings the grass in and turns it into silage. We might do that. We might uh, get both of these up and running and then I can put the... Uh, the chaff and the grass in here and have them both cranking out silage. Uh, we'll have to crank up the uh, speed on our TMR mixer as well because we're always waiting for that to uh, catch up. Uh, so I might do that. We, we may double down on some haylage as well uh, since we've got a little bit of extra uh, hay. Not a lot. We're, we're getting through the year though. And I can definitely cut this first cut of hay as haylage. And that, that would uh, make it so I don't have to keep buying uh, silage bales, which has been kind of a bummer to have to do after all that work. Uh, and then we'll get a bunch more corn ground in and we'll just see how it goes. However, I think this is going to be a great place to wrap up today's episode. And uh, we'll check back in next time for planting season. And that's all for today. Ketterk out.